Hi, Best Buds. It's Kathy with Kathy's Garden, and I'm so happy that you've joined me today. Today, we're going to be using lots of different elements to make our project. We're going to be using glassine bags. Oh, I do love glassine bags. We're going to be using some tracing paper, some lace. Now, mine happens to be vintage lace from 1924 linens and more. We're going to be using a doily. We're going to be using just some basic thread, some flat back pearls, and of course, we're going to be using some paper. Now, mine happens to be a digital page from Chapter 1 Papers, as well as my journaling cards. Uh, my larger ones are from the Paper Cameo, and my smaller ones are from Chapter 1 Papers. Now, you can use paper pads too, you guys. You don't have to use digitals. This is just a, an idea project. You can make it your own. Use what you have and it will turn out beautiful. Now let me show you what these are. Let me move this one out of the way. Let's take a closer look. It's got a lot going on, I will admit. I'll turn it so you can see that there is a gold accent. In person, I don't feel that it's super busy, but maybe looking at it on camera, it, you might be saying, Egads, there's too much going on here, Kathy. Well, if you feel that way, just take one of the elements away. Maybe take one of the stamps away. You know, just remove some things. If it's not quite to your liking, you can tweak it and make it your own. So inside, I have a journaling card. I've made my own tab. There's lots of space that you can journal on. And it slips right into the glassine bag. Now let's turn it. It has a flip on it, a built-in hinge, where you can hinge it onto your page. What a beautiful decoration for your page. And then, opposite page, you've got a little pocket here out of a doily and some lace and a paper flower. I do like how this has come together. Now let's look at the next one. They're same, similar, but yet different. They all turn out with their own little personality. Just like your project will have your own little personality in it. That's what I absolutely love about crafting. It's also uniquely yours. And usually when you make one, even when it's yours, they turn out same but different. <laughs> I think that's so much fun. Now I put the flip, the hinge, on the opposite side this time and it flips out this way. And here is the little journaling card. It just pops into my doily. It has the same elements on it, but they're different. Different, but same. <laughs> All right, now let me show you how I created these. So you can work at creating one of yours. Now here is my glassine bag right here. And it came out of this bag right here, this package. It says sacks and things. These glassine bags are four inches by six and one fourth inch. I bought them at Hobby Lobby a while back. So this is what it looks like. I obviously bought two packages because um, one of the packages is open and that's where I popped, which way did it go? I popped this one out of the open package, but I had another one, so I must have picked two up. Let me move this out of the way. Can you still see that? Mm, maybe I'll keep it. That does look a little better, doesn't it? We don't want to strain our eyes. Now, what you want to do is you want to grab some of your inks. Now, I have some stays on Saddle Brown. You can use the color of your choice. You don't have to use that color. I have a stays on Jet Black. Now I want to start with my stays on jet black and I'm reaching over and bringing in my large paragraph stamp that I have here. 
I'm also going to open up my stays on, set it right here. This paragraph stamp is from Stamp Abilities and it's called Faded Text Background. I do believe it's still available if anyone's interested. I got a little stays on on it the other day. As you can see, from here over it's a little darker than it is over here. So I'm going to kind of work on this area right here and get a darker print. I'm also placing my bag with what I determine face up. And I determine that because it's taller on the what I determine is the back than the front. So, you know, you're able to slip things in and out of it easily. So I'm placing it with what I call face up. And I'm going to take my stamp and I'm going to load it up with some ink. Now, I'm going to try to do it this way so it doesn't make that yucky noise when it clinks on the glass mat. So hopefully I'm going to turn it and see if I've got enough ink on it. Hopefully I've inked it up well. And I'm going to stamp like this. Oh yeah, that looks good. As you can see, you know, this gets kind of lighter on that side. Let's do another little bit of inking up here. And let's do the same thing. Where did I put my ink? Now I'm lost. <laughs> I got lost, guys. <laughs> Who gets lost ink uh, inking up a stamp? I don't know. <laughs> Just me. Okay, so... We're going to ink that up like that. Okay, I really like how that's turned out. It doesn't have to be super dark or perfect or anything like that, you guys. Whatever comes out is the way it's going to be, right? All right, so now I have another stamp. And um, this is one of my Swirly Whirly stamps. And this is from Hero Arts. And it has a lot of words that I cannot pronounce. It does say it's made in the United States, but then it kind of says all kinds of things that aren't English. And that's about all I know about this stamp. I don't even know. Let me look over here. I don't even know where I purchased it from. It says www.heroarts.com. Maybe it's S. Oh, dear. Can I read that? S5634. Okay. Maybe that will help you if you're interested in that stamp. I'm sure they don't call it a Swirly Whirly stamp. I'm sure it has some other type of name. But that's what I call it. <laughs> so I'm going to ink it up. So adding my ink. Now this is my Saddle Brown. Is that what I said it was? Saddle Brown? I think so. Yeah. Saddle Brown. Just to change it up. and have See, it makes a annoys when I do this. Sorry about that, guys, if that annoys you. Very sorry. Um, but, just to, so it will be something a little different. Ooh, that turned out nice. Now, I'd like a little bit more here on the top. I'm not sure. Maybe, I'll just put it like that. There, that'll be fine. I don't think I can do this, but maybe I can. Yeah, there we go. It got it all covered all up. Now I'm going to put this away. Pop it right over here. Alrighty. The next thing that I did to this, I'll turn it over so you don't have to look at all that. Oh, I just smeared it a little. That'll be okay. Is it takes a few minutes to dry on the glassine, but because it stays on, it won't come off once it gets dry. I have got some Folk Art Metallic Pure Gold. And you can buy this at, I think you can even buy it at Walmart. You can buy it at a craft store. It's not expensive at all. It's really quite cheap. And I've noticed that I've done something with my brush. But I grabbed it right here. It was behind me. And we're going to paint a little. Now, you don't have to be an artist. I am not a painter, per se. You know, I like to dabble, but I couldn't watercolor. I just don't, you know, I don't have the talent. But what we're going to do is put a little of this paint 
on our brush. And I'm going to start down here at the bottom. And you see we've got the swirly whirlies. Well, here's a swirly whirly. I'm going to dab it. And then I'm going to go around the swirl. Just kind of following the swirl. We're going to go this way now. There. So all I did was kind of follow that swirl. Or make up your own swirl if you don't have a, a swirl stamp. You can do that. You can take your brush and put a little dot and then kind of swirl it around. That's all I did. It's not hard. It's pretty easy. It might be scary at first, but you know, once you try it, you're like, wow, this is pretty fun. This is pretty fun. So I'm just putting a few swirls. It doesn't even have to follow the swirl perfectly. I went a different little different type of shape right there. Um, let's see. I'm going to carry that stem down like that. Like it's a plant is what I'm thinking of. It's not, but I'm just thinking of it in that way. Get a little bit more, put a little dot, and then kind of pull it around like that. Goodness, I think that is quite lovely. What do you think? Do you like it? I like it. So, whoops, almost ran over my paint there. Let's do one down here. I think it needs a little something down here. Oh, I think I'd like a bigger dot. So I'm just going to put a dot right there. Okay. All right, let me pick this up. There you go, you guys. It was not hard. It was simple. You have transformed your glassine bag into something pretty artsy, and you made it yourself. So I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup, and then we'll continue. All right, so I've brought two into the camera view. This is the one we just made together, and this one I made earlier. This one's completely dry. This one's still drying. I'm going to set this one aside so that we can continue with our dry one. Now, I have a digital. Now, if you don't have a digital, that's okay. Grab a piece of paper pad. You can even grab a piece of paper from a book. That would work perfect too because I've got writing here. There's writing in the book. Even if it has a picture on it, it will be really cool. So this one happens to be backed with um, another backing page. Now I thought this was all trimmed out. I apologize here why I quickly trim this. I don't think I have to trim all the way around. I think that's all I will need to do. Because what we're going to do is we're going to use our paper and we're going to back our glassine bag and make our built-in hinge. So I want this, I want this side to be on the outside of my bag, like this one is, and like this one is. As you can see, it is the same paper, okay? So I want it to be fancy on the outside. So if it's fancy on the outside, I don't want to glue it on this way, I'm going to need to glue it on this way. So I'm going to place this onto my, I'm looking at this, how does that look? Yeah, that'd be fine. I'm placing my glassine bag onto my paper as, as well as you would do. And I'm just kind of looking at it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue it on my paper just like this. I'm going to use my art glitter glue. You use the glue of your choice. And I'm going to, now remember this is the back, so the glassine bag goes all the way to the top. And mine's a little torn here. That's going to be okay, you guys. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Sometimes imperfection even looks more beautiful. So adding my glue onto my glassine bag, just like this. Okay, getting it on there. And then I'm going to glue it onto the side that I deem as not my most beautiful side of my paper. If you have a, dip, a paper pad paper and it's only printed on one side, you can use the same stamps that you use for your glassine bag 
and stamp up your area here that's going to be your hinge. Your hinge is going to be over here. So, well, it could have been over here. I chose to put it here. I tend to do that. I think it's because I'm right-handed. Now, these that I made earlier, this hinge is on this side and this is on this side. So it would depend on where you would glue your glassing bag onto your paper. This one's going to have a hinge on the left side. If I wanted it on the right side, I would have glued it over here, and then I would have had extra paper on this side for my hinge. I, I'm pretty sure you get the drift there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my ruler, and I'm going to, I'm lining this edge of this paper up on a grid, just so I get this straight. I don't want it to be wonky right. And I think I'd like my hinge, now you can determine your hinge to be whatever width you want. If you want a big one, you want a little one, it really, whatever you choose. I think I'm actually going to choose this, and I don't even know what this is, but it looks about right. So, let's give it a rip. There, I just tore. And uh, someone's going to want to know, how big is your hinge? My hinge is three-fourths of an inch. Okay, so now that we have the hinge ripped, we need to go ahead and we need to cut our glassine bag out, out from our paper. So I can barely see my glassine bag, but if I turn it, I can see it, so I'm kind of turning it. I'm going to cut that corner right there just like that. Okay, and I think what I'd like to do next is fold. This to me is a little bit of a tricky spot because I think it's because your glassing bag isn't very sturdy, although you've made it sturdier by adding some paper to it. And another fact is that you just added glue to it, so now it's even, you know, uh, less sturdy. I'm going to line it up on the edge of my glassine bag, my ruler, and I'm going to help me fold this. Now, I want to fold it back, so I'm going to turn it back on itself, but because I already folded it, it made it easier. Uh, you know, I'm all for making it easier. So now I've got my hinge already positioned, but I need to fix this. So keeping this folded, I'm just going to trim right at the corner of the glassine bag, just like that. Now if you don't like this spot right here, this part right here, I'm just going to cut it off straight, just like that. All right, so now our hinge is in place. Perfect, right guys? Absolutely perfect. We've got our pocket on our bag. We've got our glassine bag backed. It's much firmer now. Now it can be a nice little hinge. Oh, I think that's turning out lovely. Now what I want to do next is I'm going to bring in some of my larger journaling cards. And I have some scraps. And I want to make a a tab on the top of my journaling card. Now, if you don't have journaling cards, you can make yourself a journaling card. These are approximately five inches by three and a fourth. This one's a little smaller, so you make them. You need to make them to where they fit into your bag easily, so you're not struggling to get them in and out. So. You could also use different size bags, you guys. Uh, yeah, here, look. I was experimenting when I was trying to figure out what I was doing for my video, and I made some in smaller bags. So maybe you don't have a bigger bag. Maybe you have smaller bags. That's okay. Use the smaller bag. It will work just as well, and it will be super cute, right? All right, so back to our, our journaling card. So you can make your own journaling card, and this is just a scrap paper. And I'd like to make my tab stick out from my bag because I want to attach on it uh, some lace. 
or maybe some ribbon or some kind of decoration I'd like to, to place on there. So I'm just putting my my little scrap piece. I can see where my end of my journaling card is. Once I stick it in there, the end is right there. So I'm placing this in the bag just a little bit over the edge of my journaling card. I'm just trying to guesstimate where I need to fold this so that it's just going to be below my glassine bag so that when I do glue it on to my card it sticks out of the glassine bag like that. Okay so I've determined this is it and now I'm just kind of folding it. I'm not just kind of, I am folding it and I'm going to trim. Now this is going to be my tab. Make your own tab, right guys? So let's grab our corner rounder. If you don't have a corner rounder you can just cut the corners right off of your paper with your scissors and you know I like to ink so I am going to be inking up my little tab. It's a nice big tab but I like it. I think it looks really great. I'm going to bring in my frayed burlap and I'm actually going to ink just a little bit on the inside just in case it peeks through. I'm going to fold it and I'm going to ink both of my sides of the tab that we just made together. So it just take me a second. I've already inked up my journaling card. Inking this up. All right. So let's attach it. So you, you know, you will need to determine do you want it attached on this end or do you want it attached on this end? I personally am going to put it on this end. I think there's not a whole lot going on from this stem to this edge of this journaling card, whereas there's quite a bit going on over here. I don't want to really cover my stamp up. Laying it on my grid again, I'm just going to slip it down in there. Just kind of see, I think I'd like to attach it so um, it'll be straight if I kind of line it up on that grid right there. So I'm going to hold it in place like this. And I'm going to take my glue <laughs> and get my lid off. Take my glue and I'm going to add my glue right here. Just like that. And then place it down. I need to get a little piece of... <clears throat> of my paper towel which is in a drawer down here. Here we are. Wipe off my extra glue that oozed out. Okay, I'm going to turn it over. I've got part of it glued down but I don't have this little flap right here so I'm going to add a little bit of glue right there just to catch the edge of my tab. And voila! We've got a tab that goes in and now we can get our journaling card out easily. I love that. All right, so now we basically have our, our piece of ephemera made. Now we're going to want to decorate it up. Now you know I love the inking thing. So I am actually going to take a few minutes. I'm going to take my bag and my little inker and I'm going to ink all the way around all of it and then we'll Come back and we're going to decorate this. I have it all inked up and now let's start decorating. So I'm going to bring a few things in. I have a doily. My doily, I think it's four inches. Yeah, it's four inch doily. I have coffee dyed it. I'm going to tear it kind of in half. I'm not measuring. I'm just going to tear it. So now we have it look like this and I want this to go in somewhere, somewhere over here. I also have a little piece of lace and uh, I think it's an A and I'm going to add this but I think you know that extra um, gold that I had I just brushed it on my coffee dyed tracing paper and I have a little piece here that's torn <coughs> excuse me and 
I want to place this on top. Now, you know, maybe you don't have something fancy like that. That's okay. You can use a piece of cloth. You could uh, use a piece of gauze for your lace. <coughs> Excuse me, I might need to take a drink. Gauze would work really nice. So you can improv improvise uh, using some things that you might have. All right, so we've got that. And what I want to do here is because I've torn that, I'd like to just ink the edge up just to take that white color away. I don't want that white color so much. So I've got that done. I really like how the doily looks. Don't think I need to ink the doily at all. Now you need to kind of decide where you want to place this. I'm thinking um, don't really want to take it off there because this is already what I say this was four inches so it'll fit on most little journal pages easily unless it's a mini journal I think maybe about right there so let's go ahead and glue it down let's get going let's glue this doily down by adding our glue directly onto the back of the doily and laying it down where you want to place it. I'm going to need one of those little pieces of paper towel and I'm going to dab it. So there we go, dabbing it on. Then I'm going to add the glue onto my tracing paper that's been coffee dyed. And then I just took that extra gold paint that was on my mat. I had too much and I just painted it right on there. Now I'm going to place this right on top. So we're just lay layering some elements and it really works well. Now I'm going to grab my glue gun. Here's my glue gun right here. It's in a dish. I line it with aluminum foil. You see I already got a hole in it. I need to replenish. I need right here's that hole right there. <laughs> I need to put a new piece of aluminum foil in there. I'm going to use my glue gun because it makes it really nice for videos. I can glue something down. It's ready to go after I glue it down. I don't have to wait for it to dry. So I'm able to keep going. So I'm going to glue this on here just like that. Now let's see what do I want to do. Mm, you know what I was going to do? I was going to add. I'm going to pull that back up. I'm going to add this. I forgot to add this. This is my bow that I made out of regular sewing 100% cotton thread. And I just, you know, put a lot of layers and I want to pop that right underneath. I almost forgot. I almost waited too long and that glue would have been dried. But that paint helped me be able to pull it up a little bit. If it didn't have that paint on there, I don't think I could have pulled that back up like I did. But either way, I got it done. So we've got that on there now. Look how that added a lot to that little cluster. We're kind of making a cluster. We're building things up. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to pull up my tab right here from my journaling card. And I have another little piece of lace. And I would like to pop this on. And I think I'm going to pop it on like this. So I'm going to glue this one down. Now all these little elements that I'm using, the lace, the digitals, the, the uh, journaling cards, I will link, I said who they're from in the very beginning, but I will link the shops down below. And you can pop over there and see if maybe you would want to get something or not. Use what you have. It's all good. Whatever you'd like to do is perfect. All right, so we put that in there like that. Now I have, I'm not going to put my pearls on yet, but I'm going to add some pearls on here. And the reason why I'm not going to add it yet is because I'm going to turn this over and I don't want it to be too bulky on this side. I'm going to pop on my little other half of my doily. I'm going to make a pocket out of it right down here at the bottom. Now I have some laces here so, and let's see about using them to finish our little creation. Oh, here's a nice little piece. I think this piece is going to work perfectly. It sure will. So what I think I'd like to do 
is I'm going to get my art glitter glue and I'm going to glue the edge of my doily, the bottom of my doily, and just a little bit of the side edge. There's no edge on the doily, it's circle, the side. And I'm going to pop it, I'm going to give myself a little space. So it's not all the way down at the bottom. It's got a little bit of a space. And that way I can glue this right on. Now I've got some little tiny scissors here. I'm going to trim off that. As you can see I've been chopping on this piece and that will work out just perfect. I can use this chopped up piece and I can glue it right there. So I'm going to add my glue on this corner and then lay my piece down where I'd like it to go. Just like that. I can trim it when I get it all in place. So just laying it down. There we go. So now let's trim the edge here. There we go. And let's trim this edge. Well, try not to trim, <laughs> cut my my pocket, my little bag. Alrighty, got that. That's looking well. I'm going to fix this little piece right here. There we go. Now let's add a little bit more elements. I've got a little bit of net right here, and I think I just want to cut a little piece of it and pop it right down here in the corner. Oh, that's something else I want to, I want to trim this. You see how it's coming over the, um, goodness gracious, it's coming over right there. I'm going to trim that. It's coming over the head hinge. It might interfere with our hinge, and so I'm just going to trim it away. There we go. Now, with my piece of net, just a little scrap piece. I'm going to glue that down right here in the corner somewhere. I'm just kind of going to pleat it just a little bit just to give it a little movement. I'm going to grab one of my little paper flowers. I'm thinking I might want this one. Yeah, I want this one. And that pearl will come off. It's barely glued on. I'm going to take it off and I'm going to come over here in my dish with my pearls and I'm going to add a, one of my flat back pearls onto my flower and whoa <laughs> and then I'm going to add it right onto my net. Oh goodness gracious isn't that looking lovely and then you can pop whatever you'd like into your doily pocket and on this side I'm going to add a few more pieces of pearls maybe one at the very top of my diamond like that and maybe one right here at the bottom of my diamond you guys i love glassine bags i love turning them into pieces of ephemera that are going to be useful in constructing a beautiful page in your junk journals if you've enjoyed this video please give me a thumbs up I invite you to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in my next video. I'll see you there guys. Bye now.